Welcome to my channel. This is the second video of the series connecting the balance sheet to the income statement to the statement of cash flows. And I'm going to go through what I did in the first video, but I'm going to do it a lot faster. So if you want to see it in more detail and slower, check out that video. It's linked in the description. So I'll go through it step by step. So the first thing we did is we started a company called Slippers Beyond Retail. This is a private company. And I'm going to show you the inputs for the 2020 year. So what this company does is manufactures and sells slippers. The first thing we did, we added 50,000 to cash to the business. We just took it out of our personal bank account and put it into the business. So we add 50,000 to cash in a balance sheet and then 50,000 to owner's equity. The next step is we buy $30,000 of inventory from a company called Slippy. That means we remove $30,000 of cash, we send it to this company because we paid in cash, and then they send us $30,000 of inventory. So we receive inventory of really basic slippers and we make them look really nice. We put patterns and designs on them and we sell 20,000 of that inventory to Walmart. So let's minus 20,000 from inventory and put it onto the income statement as cost of revenue. And then Walmart sends us a check for $50,000. So we book that $50,000 as revenue on the income statement, but it goes also to cash in our account. So now that we have 80,000 assets, 50,000 in equity, our reconciliation on our balance sheet is off $30,000 because what we have to do at the end of every single year is we have to zero out the income statement and put it onto the retained earnings. So we take that net income of $30,000 and put it into retained earnings. And that's how we close out our financial statements. Before we go to the 2021 financials, let me just show you the statement of cash flows. It starts with net income. And then you have to adjust for non-cash items on the income statement. There were no non-cash items, so you don't have to adjust there. But you do have to adjust it for changes in working capital. Working capital is your current assets and current liabilities. And the only change was an increase of inventory. When inventory increases, cash decreases. Because when inventory increases, you have to pay for that inventory, so cash goes down. But on the other side, when inventory decreases, cash increases. So our cash flow from operations is $20,000. That's just the net income of $30,000 minus the change in inventory of $10,000. And you have to take the cash flow from operations minus the investments in property, plan, and equipment. That was nothing. So our free cash flow for 2020 was $20,000. Our net income for 2020 was $30,000. Since we moved the net income to retain earnings, we zeroed out the income statement and we could start the 2021 financials. So to start off at 80,000 of assets, 80,000 of equity. And the income statement is blank because we haven't done anything for 2021 yet. But you'll notice the balance sheet is never blank. It's always rolling. It's always changing. It's never zeroed out. So in 2021, we're still a private company. I think we'll get an IPO next year and next video, but right now we're private. So let's look at what we do. The first thing we do is we buy inventory from Slippy Co. We're going to buy 10,000 of inventory and we're going to pay in cash. So let's decrease $10,000 from cash. and we'll increase inventory 10,000. So the only change was to this current asset section. You'll notice the balance sheet looks a little different. Current assets in dark green, non-current assets in bright green. This is just for visual purposes. The second transaction for 2021 is we sell $20,000 of our inventory to Walmart. So, we take $20,000 out of inventory. So now we have no inventory and we add $20,000 of cost of revenue. And since we made these slippers really nice, we have to mark them up. We can't charge $20,000 or we'll make no money. So we charge Walmart $40,000 for these really nice slippers. We made these plain slippers into really nice ones. 
So they don't give us $40,000 of cash like they did last year. This year, they give us $20,000 of cash and $20,000 of credit. So we have to increase cash, $20,000, and increase accounts receivables, $20,000. Even though we only receive $20,000 in cash, and $20,000 of the promise to pay us cash in the future, we have to book the entire amount on the income statement. So, so far in 2021, we had $40,000 in sales, and it cost us $20,000 to generate those sales. We don't have any employees. We're doing everything ourselves, so we don't have to pay any payroll. But it's getting a little difficult, so we want to buy a machine to make our lives easier. We find this machine to make slippers. It costs $10,000, and we're going to pay for the machine in cash. So we take $10,000 out of our bank account, and we mail this company that makes the machines $10,000 and they send us the machine. Now we have an asset of $10,000. Since we received this machine in the beginning of 2021, by the end of 2021, it will already be a year old, so we have to depreciate the machine. You generally depreciate assets like machinery, real estate, vehicles, and we're gonna use a straight line depreciation method. So we're gonna depreciate it over five years, the same amount each year. So that's $2,000 each year and we put negative $2,000 in accumulated depreciation. And I linked it to the income statement, so it automatically goes there, $2,000 depreciation expense. Why don't I just decrease the 10,000 to 8,000? It's the same result. Why do I put 10,000 in negative 2,000? The reason companies do this, it's a better way to see how your assets are performing. If an investor looked at your balance sheet, they would know the original cost of the asset was $10,000 and you depreciated $2,000 so the full value is $8,000. If you just put $8,000, they don't know, did you originally pay $8,000? Did you originally pay $20,000? Now you know. Next year it's going to say $10,000, negative $4,000. So you just sum these two numbers to get the current value of this asset. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. A contra asset account reduces the value of a related account. You'll see other contra accounts. This is just one of them. Now let's pay taxes. We got to pay 20% of our operating profit in taxes. How do we get $18,000 of operating profit? Well, we had revenue of $40,000. We had cost of revenue of $20,000. So our gross profit was $20,000. Then we had to subtract depreciation of $2,000. And now we have $18,000 of operating profit of the business. The taxes are 20% of that. I just picked that number 20%. And that comes at the $3,600 in taxes. But we have to pay taxes out of cash. So we have to decrease cash 3,600. So let's do that. Now everything's reconciled. You can see the net income is 14,400. And we're off on our balance sheet 14,400. Because when we close out the year, we have to move this to retain earnings. So everything balances out. Let's look at the statement of cash flow before we do that. So the statement of cash flow shows all the cash that went in and out of your business. And some people like to look at this as opposed to net income because if you have a lot of things like depreciation or other non-cash items, it could make your net income really wacky. The statement of cash flows has three sections. Cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. Let's do cash flow from operations first. You start with net income and then you adjust it for changes in working capital. Let's see the changes in working capital. We actually had a decrease in inventory. Remember last year when we closed out the year, we had 10,000 inventory? Now we have no inventory. When our inventory goes down, our cash goes up. The opposite happened last year. Our inventory went up, so our cash goes down because when you increase inventory, you're draining cash. People have asked me sometimes, how come this company is reporting such amazing profits? Their net income is so high, but they have negative cash flow. They're going through so much cash. That doesn't make sense. I can't figure it out. And a lot of times I say, look at the inventory. 
Because some companies load up on inventory. They spend so much money on inventory, especially during like Christmas season to get ready for lots of sales. And what happens when you load up on inventory? It just sits on the balance sheet, right? It doesn't affect net income, but it drains your cash. And then if you need cash or something else, like you run into a cash crunch, you might go to business. So look at cash flow, it's so important. Inventory is so important too. If you can't manage your inventory correctly, you can really screw yourself. I know personally some people who went bankrupt on inventory. Changes in accounts receivable also affects cash flow. Because remember, we should have received $40,000 from Walmart, but they only gave us $20,000 and $20,000 on credit. So we have to deduct $20,000 on the statement of cash flows. Depreciation, we had a minus 2,000 depreciation, so we have to add back any non-cash items. So we have to add $2,000. Let's look at cash flow from investing. The only thing was a $10,000 piece of equipment we bought. So we have to take that into account because even though that will benefit us in the future, in this current year, it detracted $10,000 of cash. So our free cash flow is cash flow from operations, $6,400 minus the $10,000 of the PP&A. So our free cash flow was negative $3,600. Even though the income statement says we had a profit of $14,400, we still leak $3,600 of cash flow. In 2020, we had $70,000 of cash. Now we have $3,600 less of cash. And you might be saying, I thought we had a good year. We had $40,000 of sales, and we only spent $20,000 on the product, so it was a $20,000 profit. So it seems like we did well. We did, but we didn't get $20,000 from Walmart. We will get it, I'm sure, in the future, but at the present time, we don't have it. So in 2021, we used more cash, $3,600 or more cash, than we brought in. And although it's not terrible, of course, we expect to get the money from Walmart and we expect to grow the business, if this continues to happen, if you keep leaking cash, eventually you're gonna to go to business or have to take on a lot of debt. And at some point you may need cash for something. You may get sued, you may, um, your know, warehouse may blow up or you may have problems somewhere else and you just need cash. And if you run into a cash crunch and you can't borrow, you may have to go to business. So to close out the financial statements, we have to move the 14,400 of net income over to retain earnings. You see we have 94,400 of assets and we have uh, unreconciled balance sheet of 14,400. When we do close it out, it'll look like this. The beginning of 2022, we'll have everything reconciled, the money is in retain earnings and we're ready to start a new year. So in the next video, I'll probably IPO the company to show you how that affects the financial statements. I'll also buy on credit. This video I sold on credit. But next video, I'll buy products on credit. So I'll have to book two accounts payable, a liability. I may take a bank loan. Walmart is gonna return back to us some defective slippers. So I'll show you how that affects the financial statements. And we're gonna also hire an employee. So we're gonna have payroll as well. So let me know what you think of the video. Make sure you leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Let me know if this makes sense or if it's confusing at all. Thanks for watching.